Hey guys, Rob here from Team Squeegee. When I first started window cleaning, I was told by a lot of people that were in the industry that there's no way that I could make $75 an hour, $100 an hour, $150 an hour. And the more that I increase that hourly wage, the more people tell me, oh, you can't get that. We price by the hour, we don't price by the window. Keep that in mind. But let's go back to the beginning, because I know a lot of you guys are just starting out. There was a time where I didn't think that I could make over $100,000 a year. Internally, I couldn't fathom it. No one in my family had ever made over $100,000 a year. And the most money I'd ever seen anyone make besides, you know, celebrities, which, you know, I didn't know celebrities, was, um, you know, in my estimation, of course, I didn't go ask, asking them, but I figured they made around sixty or 70000 They had a comfortable living. No one in my circle that I knew had disposable income. And I certainly had never had a job where I could afford to save money or to just go have a steak dinner if I wanted. That was then. When I made my first hundred, it was actually 120000 when I made my first $120,000 in one year and I had disposable income and I had over $15,000 in my savings account, the first time that happened, something clicked in my head. And what clicked was a switch that turned on a light bulb, to name every single cliche out there, that said to me, not only can you do this, not only do you deserve this for working hard, but I want you to have this. I want you to have this financial freedom. There was a still small voice in my head that said, I want you to have this. All you have to do is work for it and try to do the right thing always. And that meant a lot to me. So for the first time in my life, I saw that normal average people can make six figures a year, 100,000 a year, 200,000, even a million dollars. And before that moment, I didn't think it was possible. I thought you had to have some sort of high degree, like a PhD or even a master's. And you had to go into banking or you, know, you had to be an architect. You had to design a, you know, a whole building or you had to own a football team. You know, I had all these preconceived ideas on how people that had a lot of money or that made a, a comfortable living in, in the six-figure realm, that they had to have these particular positions, which isn't true. It's not true. The truth of the matter is, and this is my point for this video, and it was inspired by, I'm going to give a shout out. It was inspired by AP Contracting Services who commented on our YouTube video. They're now charging more and they're not listening and they're not being the cheap guys anymore. I'm paraphrasing, they said it much better in their comment. So my point is, is very simple. You will get what you charge. If you only charge $10 an hour, $15 an hour, $30 an hour, that's what you're gonna get. But more importantly, that's what you are setting the value of your business up to be, is a $30 an hour business. When in reality, if you charge what you're worth, $50 an hour, $100 an hour, $200 an hour, then you set up the value of your business to be that amount. Now some of you are going to say, oh, but there's no way that I can get $100 an hour in my area. Have you tried it? Because the truth is, is that you're not going to get 
every single person that you bid especially if you're charging a premium like a hundred dollars an hour it's just not going to happen it's the law of numbers it's the law of averages and if it is happening then you need to raise your prices that's the truth of it because in that area if you're getting 100 percent of all your bids then you're charging too low and think about that on the same spectrum on the other end if you are charging $30 an hour and you're getting 100% of all your bids, then you need to raise your prices. That's a huge indicator. You should be charging $100 an hour and maybe getting three out of four, or even two out of four, half. Okay, I would, I would hope for a little better than half, to be honest. Around 55% uh, would be good. 60% of your bids, I think that you're probably in the right price range. I will give you a couple of examples. I come from a, a, a sales background, and every time I went into a new sales job as a sales manager, I would tell my sales team, hey, you're not charging enough. We need to raise these prices, because that was my job as a sales manager was to bring more money in for the company. And so one of the ways that we did that is that uh, more often than not, our sales team had a little bit of leeway as to how much they could sell a product or a service for. In other words, if the product or the service could be sold at $50 an hour or up to, let's say, $100 an hour or, you know, per product, the company said, okay, we'll give you a $50, you know, uh, leeway. So here's what we want you to do. Go in and ask for $100 an hour, but you can drop it all the way down to $50 an hour, half. Or $75 you know kind of like whenever you go buy a, you know a new TV maybe the sales price you know maybe the regular price is $300 but when they have a sale it's only you know 250 so the store has about a $50 leeway there right so that's pretty typical with almost all sales so I would go in and I would just I would I would right away figure out that my sales team one of the reasons why they were struggling was because they were just going in and selling at the rock bottom price so the company margins were small and more importantly the salespeople actually just weren't making enough money to live on so as a result we the company that I would go in and be a consultant for or a manager for would have high turnover in sales so inevitably, I would go in and I would say, hey guys, why are you going in at the lowest price? That's not what sales is. Sales is going in at the highest price and selling the value of your product or your service or yourself or your business or all of it. That's what a sales job is. A sales job is not an order taker. You don't go into someone's house, give them the, lock, the rock bottom price because you know they're going to buy it and basically just take their order and walk away with a small commission and the company doesn't grow and the company's value actually decreases. No, sales jobs means you have to do the work. You have to go in and sell that product or that service. So how does this translate to you as a brand new window cleaner? You are going in and you are selling your business. Your business and your brand, and probably most important at this stage, yourself. You have to go into that customer's house. They have to know that they can trust you within the first five seconds of you being there. They have to know that whenever you charge them $100 an hour, they're going to get a value out of that. Their perceived value is their reality. If you go in and say, hey, I'm gonna clean your windows and it's gonna be $100 an hour, you're not gonna say that. You're gonna give them an overall price, you know, $400. And in your head, you're gonna know it's gonna take four hours. So in your head, you know you just made $100 an hour, okay? Don't go in trying to sell a window cleaning job and say, oh, I only charge $100 an hour. No, you'll lose 100% of them, trust me. You go in with a set price, but that's a whole nother video. So you're going to go in and you're going to say to your customer, I'm going to charge you $400 and here's what I'm going to do for you. Make sure you use those words for you. Here's what I'm going to do for you. Here's what my business is going to do for you. We're going to clean your windows, wipe your seals, steam clean your tracks, clean off your screens. We're going to go above and beyond and we will not leave until you are completely satisfied. What is the most important part of that transaction? Is it the beginning whenever you first walk in? You're trying to make a sale, you give them your pitch, you're trying to build the rapport. 
Is it whenever you actually do the job and you do high quality standard, you go above and beyond? Because that's key right there is going above and beyond. With every single customer, you should be going above and beyond what their expectations is. That's the only way that you're gonna build your business. You gotta trust me on that. Go above and beyond every single time. If you're leaving your customer's house and their trash can's out by the curb, pull the trash can up for them. And then, let them know you did it. That's a whole nother video about customer centric. But what's the most important part of that transaction? I'll tell you, the most important part of that transaction is when you leave after you've done the work. Because right before you leave, you need to make sure, come hell or high water, that that customer is 110% completely satisfied. And if there's any doubt in your mind that they are not 100% satisfied, then you better not leave. That's all there is to it. Because especially at this stage in the game, you're just starting out, you're just starting your business, you can't afford one bad review. You can't afford one negative review. So the value that you're going to present to your customer says, hey, Mr. Customer, I'm worth this much money. My business and my expertise and my research and all the time that I've invested, my sweat, my tears, my, my late nights, my 13 hour days, my 14 hour days, the insurance that I pay, the licenses that I bought, the equipment that I've invested in is worth this much money. I don't get paid sick time. I don't get paid vacation days. I don't get paid holiday pay because I'm trying to build my own business and I'm trying to build something for me and my family. So therefore, Mr. Customer, if you want my services, you're gonna have to pay this much. And customers will respect you for that. Now don't say it to them like that, of course, but that's the mentality that you need to have whenever you go in. You have to demand respect for yourself and for your business. And if you lowball yourself, with your own prices, you're not even respecting your own business. You're not even respecting your own self-worth or your own self-value. Again, going back to my initial, I didn't think I could ever make 100,000 because I had never seen anybody do it. But the moment I did it, holy crap, I'm worth this much. And that still small voice said, yeah, you are worth this much. In fact, you're worth 10 times as much. And if you keep it up, you will re get rewarded with that. Now, going back to my three P's video right here, not every day is gonna be uh, rainbows and sunshine, guys. And most of you out there, if you're just starting out, sad to say, you're not gonna make it. But the only reason why you're not gonna make it is because, again, going back to my video, is because you're gonna quit. Give your business a year. Don't quit before then. Just don't do it, no matter what you have to do. Barring some extreme, extreme, circumstance and by extreme extreme I mean you know a death in the family really that's the only thing I could really really think of <laughs> then don't give up six months into my business we got hit with a hurricane wiped out my entire house I had to relocate didn't have anything all my stuff was in storage I wasn't married had no second income coming in on top of that my only working van at the time got flooded and, and was not working. I had no savings in my account. I had only just started the business. Boy, I wanted to throw in that towel, I tell you, so bad because it would have been so easy for me to go get another job, another sales job, work for somebody else and start making it right off the top, probably between 70 and 100,000 a year based just solely on my resume. It would have been so easy to do that. I say easy, meaning versus picking myself up by the bootstraps and keeping on keeping on persevering and persevering and having the patience so don't come at me and tell me oh well my phone bill got my phone got cut off so you know I had to quit my business or hey I I lost my other job so I had to quit my business or hey I, I'm not being able to save anything I can barely make ends meet don't come to me with that for the longest time, I was eating hot dogs and chips every single night. I'd go to Walmart and I'd buy those bags, of, you know, the big bags of chips. Not the big bags, but like the big bags that have the little bags inside. And that would be my dinner. I'd buy a pack of hot dogs every 
every night. Not healthy eating, I know, I get it. And water. Don't give up. When I first started out, I had been told by someone who had been in the business for over 20 years, there was no way, no way, that I could get $75 an hour. Now, this was way back then. They were only used to getting at most $50 an hour, but on average between $20 and $30 an hour. A, they hadn't raised their prices in 13 years. So I took that into consideration. But they told me point blank, there's no way you can do that. People will not pay $75 an hour. That was then, this is now, we average about $200 an hour per house that we do. Storefronts, we average between 30 and 50. That's pretty normal, I think, industry-wide. Your self-worth is what you make it. Nobody else can make your self-worth. If you think you're worth $100 an hour, then ask for it. If you think you're only worth $50 an hour, ask for it. Either way, you're gonna get what you ask for. If you ask me as a customer to pay you $50 an hour, I'm not just gonna magically pay you $100 an hour. I'm gonna give you $50 an hour. Assuming that I, as your customer, see the value and what it is you're providing. And whose responsibility is it to make me, as a customer, see the value of your product or service? <clears throat> it's yours. Especially if you're a one-man show, it's 110% on your shoulders. It's your business. You have to go in there and you have to convince me, usually within a matter of minutes, that the, that the service that you're going to provide for me is worth the amount of money you're going to ask for. If you're losing out on price, then you need to adjust your sales pitch. You're not building enough value, and this goes for the sales industry. You're not building enough value in your product or your service. That's all there is to it. And I've said this over and over and over and over and over again when I was a sales manager at my previous jobs. And it's the truth. Because over and over and over and over again, it was proven correct whenever I told my sales team, hey, go out and ask for the higher dollar amount because our service is worth it. Now, two things will happen. Either your value will continue to go up and you'll go from $70 an hour to $90 an hour to $100 an hour to $120 an hour to $150. It will continue to increase or you'll start out at $70 an hour, you might get up to 80, maybe 90, and then it'll start to drop. Back down to 80, back down to 70, back down to 60, back down to 50, until you get to the point to where you go out of business. So what's the difference there? The difference is quality. On the first, in the first example, you are charging 70, 80, 90, 100 because your quality is getting better and better and better. You're also getting more efficient because you're taking your profit and you're reinvesting it into your company so you're, you're buying better equipment and you're coming up with strategic ways that you can provide the same quality or better quality at a faster rate. For example, you've invested in a water-fed pole so now you know, a job that might take you an hour only takes you 30 minutes. So that just increased your pay. In the second example where your hourly rate drops and your value drops and you eventually go out of business, it's because <clears throat> your quality isn't there. You're promising one thing, but you're delivering something else. And your customer base suffers because of it you say to your your customers oh I'm gonna do X Y and Z but then you really only deliver on X and Y so what happens is your customers they talk to each other you're no longer getting referrals and now whenever you go to the neighbors or your name gets out in your community it's not a good reputation because you promised X, Y, and Z, but you only delivered X, Y. Your quality wasn't there. 
So <clears throat> if you start losing customers, that's a huge sign that you need to take a look at your service, your quality of work. And, it, and at that point, it might not even be you. It might be someone that's working for you. And, you know, maybe in the beginning they were doing really great, but now they're slacking off. So you, you as a manager, you need to stay on top of that. But my point is, is that if I'm going to charge you $600 to clean your windows, chances are you as a customer have no idea how long it's going to take me. I will tell you, if I'm charging you $600 to clean your windows, in my mind, it's probably going to take me about three hours now because that's what we charge. <clears throat> but the customer doesn't know that. So how many times have I done a $600 job in three hours or less and the customer come out and complain to me that we did it too fast? How many times has that happened? Well, zero. Do you want to know why? Because the customer who sees the quality of work when you're done doesn't care how long it takes you. They're just not going to care. And if they did come out and complain about how long it took me, all I would simply do is take them around the house, which we do anyways, but take them around the house and show them how spectacular their window seals, their screens, their tracks, whatever we did, show them how spectacular of a job we did. And then they see the value and what they paid for. And that's all it is to it. It's not rocket science. It's you promising X, Y, and Z at a certain price and then delivering on X, Y, and Z and going a little bit above and beyond. You have to keep your customer engaged. You have to get to know your customer. I know a lot. I know one window cleaner who goes out. They barely talk to their customers. And guess what? They don't have a lot of customers because they just don't engage in their customers. This is a people business. Whether you want to believe it or not, it is. If you want to stay in business for the long term, you as the manager, as the owner of your business, you've got to engage your customers.